Yellowstone supervolcano, a researcher claims that NASA work on the caldera could, of course, cause it to explode. This is also what Mike Poland, the geologist in charge of Yellowstone, keeps telling us. He will not let anyone touch Yellowstone. Not at all. Now, a Yellowstone volcano researcher claimed NASA's plan to drill into the supervolcano in an attempt to cool it down will not work, and it could even cause it to explode, of course, to erupt. Callum Hoare, Express UK, reports this. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, California, came up with the bombshell idea back in 2015 to help, quote-unquote, save the world from a super eruption at Yellowstone. The concept, which in theory could uh, cost around 2.7 billion pounds, or about three and a half billion dollars, would involve drilling into the hydrothermal system at Yellowstone National Park and attempting to cool the magma. But it won't work, according to the professor Simon Holland. And this is also what uh, the geologist in charge, Mike Poland, believes. Uh, Mike Poland, as you know, gives this the uh, Caldera Chronicles every week, most times. Now, Mr. Holland is a keen science researcher who has produced documentaries for NASA, funded projects including pinpointing Earth-threatening asteroids, and also runs his own YouTube channel, where he likes to debate popular scientific topics, with this week's video being dedicated to Yellowstone. He told his 30,000 subscribers, Turns out that Yellowstone is on an eruption cycle of about 600,000 years, and the last eruption was 600,000 years ago. But NASA and JPL are worried about it, and they've come up with a cunning plan to cool Yellowstone down. Most volcanoes are a cinder cone, and when they explode, lava comes out the top, runs down the sides. They tend to do a lot of damage, but they don't devastate the planet. Now, a caldera, or a supervolcano on the other hand, like Yellowstone, really is different because under the ground is a bubble, and I'm talking a big bubble of molten lava. When this type of volcano erupts and the land falls down, exposing a lake of liquid lava, which is under pressure, and it spurts out. Mr. Holland, who got his professor title as a nickname for his investigative research over the years, rather than professional credentials, went on to outline his problems with NASA's plan. He said, there is evidence that the last time Yellowstone erupted, that was uh, that the ash went at least 3,000 miles to Nebraska, and the amount of ash and lava and stuff that comes out goes into the atmosphere, and it can cause what's known as a nuclear winter, masking the Earth from sunlight. So JPL and NASA are planning to spend three and a half billion dollars on cooling Yellowstone down, but it's a big lake molten lava. And uh, he says the, uh, they propose drilling down into the edges of the caldera, pumping cold water down and cooling down the big bubble of magma. Here's a fact though, he says, they would have to cool it down by 20 gigawatts that's a large number, and it would take 16,000 years to cool it down. 16,000 years. Professor Holland went on to add his concerns that NASA's plan could even cause a super eruption. He says, would it work? Probably not. It would be the world's largest geothermal power station, but I don't think it's going to work. Right now, the largest is the geysers in California. That's the largest geothermal plant in the world, the geysers in California. In the past month, we've had about 1,100 quakes there. Now, he says, plus this is a potential danger in Yellowstone. By cooling down the edge, the peripheral of the caldera, it might crack, causing fissures and actually cause it to explode. So that's not good. The volcano explodes about every 600,000 years. So the chances of it exploding in your lifetime are extremely low. If JPL NASA and the U.S. government decide to cool down the Yellowstone caldera, I just hope it doesn't explode. Now, Mr. Holland is not alone in his worries. Brian Wilcock, uh, the uh, British astronomer who, has, uh, who was part of the original study with JPL, told BBC in 2017, the most important thing with this plan is to do no harm. 
if you drill into the top of the magma chamber, chamber and try to cool it from there, this would be very risky. And he says this could make the cap over the magma chamber more brittle and prone to fracture, and you might trigger the release of harmful volatile gases in the magma at the top of the chamber, which would otherwise not be released. But the possibility of NASA fulfilling the plan is unlikely. A final report by JPL said, there are a number of unknowns about the nature of the supervolcano eruptions and how they are supplied that needs to be addressed before attempting any engineering solutions or favoring a water resource approach. In particular, more detailed imaging of the, supp the supply of the melt to potentially supervolcanic systems is necessary in order to gain a better understanding of how much heat supply varies from a steady state, experiments and models of how large magma reservoirs respond to cooling, and developing an improved understanding of the risks associated with the presence and variable supply of water above the magma chambers. He says, given the potential, potentially huge cost of supervolcanic eruptions on regional or even global scales, we consider these to be potentially valuable to stimulate further research. And for any of these techniques to be applied, government intervention would also almost certainly be required. Some supervolcanoes are in the government-managed wilderness, as is the case for Yellowstone National Park. Even the concept of active water resource management would require planning, legislation to prevent private activities from adversity, adversely affecting water resources and potential infrastructure to transport water to or from the site. Also, we know that uh, from what the geologists tell us, the magma reservoir under Yellowstone is the biggest on Earth. Also, we have a huge carbon lake, about half of the United States. Remember that this is the carbon lake under here? And also, we have a magma corridor that feeds from the border of U.S.-Mexico, the Sultan Buttes volcano, the Ridge Crest volcanoes, the, the coastal volcanic field that is. It also feeds the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano and all the high threat volcanoes on the west coast. And it also feeds, it has another branch going towards Yellowstone. It's the same magma chamber. And perhaps that's why after the Ridge Crest earthquakes, we always have a quake swarm in Yellowstone and a quake swarm in Long Valley Caldera supervolcano. This happened 20 years ago when they had a 7.1 earthquake in Ridgecrest at that time, 1999. They had quake swarms in Yellowstone and quake swarms in Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano where they do have a geothermal plant. They also have a geothermal plant in Coso Volcanic Field in Ridgecrest and also in Salton Buttes. And this is the, guy, the geysers here. What's this? Okay. Okay, the geysers are right here, and they've had about a thousand some odd earthquakes this past month. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.